For many medical schools, the interview is the final hurdle in the admissions process. You've done all this hard work to get to this point, but there's just one thing standing in your way. The good news is there's a lot you can do to prepare for the interview to ace it on the day. Hey, my name's Adam, I'm a junior doctor from Australia, and I went through the interview process myself and have since helped countless students in preparing for their own interviews. In this video, we're gonna talk a bit about what the interview structure's like for medical school admissions in Australia. We're gonna talk about some of the questions they ask and some of the content you'll need to know, as well as some general tips and resources for preparing and nailing your interviews on the day. Let's talk about the interview structure. So in Australia, most universities will use the multi-mini interview format or the MMI, which is also largely used internationally as well. And what this basically means is that students or applicants will go through between five to 10 different stations, depending on the university, each station lasting between sort of four to 10 minutes. In each station, students will get asked a range of questions based on a central scenario or STEM. We'll talk a bit more about that in a second, but I think the MMI can be a great format for students because it essentially gives you five or 10 different opportunities to make a good first impression and to answer a range of questions that you may or may not be already familiar about. For universities, this can also be great because they can ask a range of different questions about different topics. Now to find out what sort of format your university follows, it's best to take a look at the GEMSAS guide, which has a breakdown of how each university conducts their interviews how long the stations last for and how many stations it is comprised of. And I'll put a link to the most recent GEMSAS guide in the description below. But firstly, what do you actually need to know for these interviews? Often you can predict the style of questions that are going to be asked. These can be broken down into common areas such as ethical dilemmas, professional encounters, public health and rural health, personal and motivational style questions, and indigenous health as well. And other station types that some universities might also ask might involve acting stations where you have to converse with a paid actor, usually to address a personal or interpersonal kind of problem. You might get a video station where you might have to watch a video and explain what happens in the video to the examiner. And also DTEC stations where you might have to explain a complex topic in a simple and succinct way to the interviewer. So let's take a look at a few of these areas. Usually they won't require any pre-existing clinical knowledge, but they will expect you to know a little bit about some important areas generally around health and medicine and public health and that sort of thing. So let's touch on a few of these areas that students often trip up on in interviews. Often ethical dilemmas will be a question to Type that students will struggle with and this might be because you can't actually rote learn a response here and so for these questions structure is really important in your answers. Interviewers might not necessarily want you to solve the dilemma or the conflict but they will want a fair assessment of the issues at hand. In these sorts of questions, a uh, good understanding of some of the key ethical principles like autonomy, beneficence, non-maleficence, and justice can be really important in answering your responses, as well as a bit of an understanding of things like professional boundaries in the workplace, particularly in healthcare scenarios. And importantly, if you notice in the scenario that's posed to you or the question stem that something is unethical or unprofessional, be sure to call this out directly. Funnily enough, this is something that students often forget get to do. They might talk around the issue and explain some of the problems, but they might not necessarily label it as being unethical or unprofessional. So be sure to do that from the get-go. And in these sorts of questions, you're often expected to be asked, what are the main issues here? So have a little bit of a think about that in your preparation and when you're reading the STEM initially. What are the main issues? What are the main problems that are present or obvious in this scenario? When answering ethical dilemmas, it's also important to understand all sides of the issue and think about which different people are involved or implicated by this particular conflict. This is often referred to as a stakeholder approach and it can be really good to ensuring that you have a comprehensive, rounded response and that you include and touch on each individual person that, or, or thing or area that's uh, impacted by this particular scenario. And I'll give you an example. If you pose an ethical question that's based in the hospital between two different colleagues, you might consider the impact that that particular interaction has on one colleague or on another colleague, but you might also think about ultimately if these two people are involved in patient care, how is this affecting the care of the patient? And that's one of the foremost issues that you need to consider in these ethical dilemmas as well. How is this affecting patient care? How is this affecting the patient's family? How is this going to be affecting other colleagues or members of the team 
given that teamwork is such an important feature to successful patient care and in the, in the hospital environment. Also, how is this affecting the general running of the hospital or the, the flows within, within the hospital environment? And no matter what question you're asked, having a good structure to your response is absolutely vital. And this is probably my biggest piece of feedback. With these ethical questions, I'll often start my responses with something like, look, I understand that from one perspective or from one person's perspective, it might be considered that you know, so-and-so is the issue. However, the central issue here is so-and-so. So it shows that you're considering both sides of the story. So for example, if I was a junior doctor being bullied by a senior doctor, I might say, look, I understand the pressures of senior staff in the hospital and the expectation on them. However, being a junior doctor is really difficult as well and bullying is never appropriate in the workplace and therefore this situation is unprofessional. So right there, I've shown that I'm acknowledging both sides of the conflict, but I'm also calling out the key issue in the scenario. And with this sort of structure, a solid first sentence can go a long way to frame your response and giving you a good structure throughout your answer. Next, questions about public health can really throw people, but to be honest, it probably doesn't take a whole lot of reading or research to get a pretty basic foundation of some of the key public health issues at the moment. So anyone preparing for your interview, I'd really recommend having a bit of a read about some of the contemporary public health issues at the moment, and also having a bit of an understanding of some key topics around public health. One key concept that often comes up in these interviews is the difference between equality and equity. And knowing this can give you a really good foundation for some of your responses with these public health questions. You might already know what the difference is, and I think a lot of universities teach this at an undergraduate level now, but also really important to know what these differences are, and there are some good graphics that kind of explain the difference between equality and equity. Another extremely important concept to understand in public health is that of prevention. It's really, really important to understand that preventing a condition before it happens is much more cost effective and beneficial for a population. Conditions such as heart disease, diabetes, and most cancers are considered non-communicable diseases or NCDs, which essentially just means that they can't be transmitted from one person to another. And these conditions are thought to be largely preventable as well by addressing risk factors like nutrition, exercise, environmental risk factors, and socioeconomic risk factors that will actually help prevent these conditions from from occurring in the first place. And a question that occasionally comes up in interviews is a question around resource allocation. So if you were given X amount of dollars to spend on uh, addressing a particular health issue in the community, how would you best spend it to create the greatest amount of benefit for the population? And prevention is a really important concept to think about here, because if you can allocate this money to preventing a condition before it even happens, then you're gonna save more money down the track by treating that condition. For these resource allocation questions, it can be good to have a bit of a brainstorm and think about in advance uh, some examples that you might use, but also how you might kind of structure your responses. Next, Indigenous health. This is a topic that often comes up in medical school interviews and it's something that you should really know about before coming into medical school because it is such an important issue. Similar to public health, make sure you have a bit of a read in advance and research some of the key issues that are facing Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander populations in Australia at the moment, and some of the key historical issues that have faced these populations in the past as well. And right off the bat, please avoid confusing Indigenous health with rural health, or thinking that they're one and the same thing, because they're absolutely not, and it happens way too much in, in these sorts of interviews. And it's really important to understand that issues facing Indigenous Australians aren't aren't always attributed to living in rural areas. They're much more widespread systemic issues that affect Indigenous Australians living in metropolitan areas as well. Next, I recommend reading an overview of the Closing the Gap report in Australia, which basically outlines some important metrics and key determinants of health for Indigenous populations in Australia, and some of the key things that we're focusing on as a country to help improve Indigenous health in Australia. And also when you're suggesting any projects or initiatives surrounding Indigenous health, make sure you include an Indigenous voice in those projects and representation to make sure that you're addressing a real issue in these communities and that these programs and projects um, have longevity going forward. Lastly, let's quickly touch on some personal and motivation style questions. Here they might ask you about your own personal interests, about some challenges you faced in the past, uh, and also the age-old question, why medicine? And I think this isn't a surprise to anyone sitting in the interview that they might ask you something like this, 
So please have a bit of a think about these responses beforehand. Think about some times where you found you know, particularly difficult, some challenges, and expect to talk about these in the interview. With regards to your motivation for medicine and why medicine, again, have a bit of a think about this response, but make sure it, it's genuine, it comes from a good place, and it doesn't also seem too pre-rehearsed on the day, as obvious as that sounds. And yeah, always try to be authentic and humble in your responses. Uh, medical school is an incredibly humbling journey. It can be difficult, but it's also an amazing opportunity to meet a diverse range of people and different patients with incredibly interesting stories. And so interviewers aren't looking for the perfect answer. They're not looking for someone that doesn't make mistakes. So be honest about the mistakes that you make and your learnings from them. And I think this will go a long way to making sure that you have a really solid uh, interview experience. So all the best for your upcoming interviews if you have one and good luck if you're hoping to get one. I'll be posting a bunch more content regarding interview processes. Hopefully you found this helpful, but as always, if you have any questions or anything you'd like to add or you want me to cover in more detail, feel free to drop a comment below and I'll be sure to answer that as soon as I can. I'll also be posting some more interview and med admissions related content on the channel, so consider subbing if you're interested in that. But uh, otherwise, I'll see you soon. Thanks a lot.